Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 18th of October. Not that many updates this week, but some uh, pretty cool uh, items, especially around the VM space. New videos this week. I just did one video, but it dived into using Azure budgets. There's been a lot of customers being caught out with unexpected charges because they've used the SKU they didn't realize they used by mistake or they've something running by mistake and it's totally avoidable. So I go through how we can set up budgets, how you can maybe estimate what your cost should be so you don't get surprised by some big bill. So definitely everyone should be using budgets in their environments. So on to what's new on the compute side, so for app service, there's now a reduction in price for the paid SKU, so not the free SKU, but all of the other tiers, just not F1, when you're using the JBoss EAP. So the EAP is the Enterprise Application Platform, which is a Java-based app server developed by Red Hat. So now when I want to leverage that on app service, there's a 63% price reduction. So it makes it a lot more accessible. VMWatch is in preview. So this is an in-VM service for virtual machines and virtual machine scale sets that gives a whole set of health signals sent to Microsoft's AI ops, so it's AI operations, which is used for the detection of issues, um, could be caused as part of some update that's been rolled out that's causing a problem, and then prevention. So it's in a standardized format that gets sent into that AI operations. It's delivered as part of the application health VM extension, which is what we might currently use if we want to do detection based on our application running inside the VM. So a certain port, a certain type of response we want, not just some generic signal, well, we could use the application health extension to do that. We say, hey, go and look at this port to probe if it's healthy or not. So this VM watch gets delivered as part of that. It's for Linux and Windows, it's free. There's a huge number of built-in signals it's looking at across network, disk, CPU, process, uh, the instance metadata service that the OS can use to talk to ARM to get information about the surrounding VM, the clock, connectivity issues to Azure storage, critical health alerts. So very easy to turn on. And then again, it's now gonna give um, Azure those signals so that it can help detect if there's some problem happening. And then this is a big one. So Cobalt 100 ARM-based VMs have gone GA. So remember, the Cobalt 100 is Microsoft's first 64-bit ARM processor that they designed in-house. So it's part of their custom silicon program. So they're building this silicon for specific use in the cloud. So there's a number of different SKUs built on this. There's the DPSv6. So this is a more generalized SKU. It's got a four to one memory to CPU ratio. There's a DPL SV6, which has a two to one memory to core uh, ratio. Then there's the EP, which is those memory optimized, which is an eight to one memory to CPU ratio. So you, you get a choice. There's ones with or without the local temporary storage. So it's the D variant has local temporary storage available, but it's a 50% better price performance than the previous ARM-based VMs. And there's a whole set of different stats around how much better it is than the previous ones, but you can now go and check that out. And I know I've mentioned this in a previous update, but the ED25519 SSH keys um, with Linux VMs is now gone GA. So the big deal here is, for a much smaller key, I think for example, 256 bits, it has the same security as a much larger RSA key. Now, the fact that it's a smaller key means it's more performant, uses less resources while maintaining the same level of security. So I can now create these via the portal. I can use the CLI, I can use PowerShell. Now RSA is still the default for now, but you can go ahead and create these. On the networking side, so ExpressRoute Metro has gone GA. Again, the big deal here is normally with an ExpressRoute circuit, I get two connections. I get these active-active connections. So they go to different routers at Microsoft Enterprise Edge. So I get resiliency from a router failure, but both those routers are in the same physical peering point, meet me location, that carrier neutral facility. So that carrier neutral facility, that building had a problem 
well, both those connections would be down. So what Express Route Metro does is you still have the two active active connections, but it now goes to two routers in different physical buildings. So I have one router in one building, one router in another, and that makes up my Express Route circuit now. So what that does is it gives me a better resiliency. Now those buildings are in the same metro, the same city, which is why it's Express Route Metro. But if I think in Azure terms, normal Express Route would be like using availability sets. So hey, there's, there's two routers, they're on different racks, but they're in the same data center. Whereas this is more like availability zones. So I'm actually going to two distinct separate buildings with their own sets of infrastructure. So it gives me a better resilience. So where it's available and it's only available in certain locales right now, uh, this, this will be a much better option. On the storage side, so Azure Elastic SAN is now GA for use with the Azure VMware solutions. So remember the Azure Elastic SAN is Azure's native iSCSI target-based solution that sits directly on its Azure storage platform. So iSCSI runs over the network stack so it runs over the network adapters of whatever is consuming it. We saw this used for Azure Container Storage, but now AVS can leverage it as well. So again, it's iSCSI based. You have volumes that you put as part of volume groups for management. And each volume in this case would show up as a VMFS data store. It has snapshot support and it's a lower total cost of ownership compared to similar available offerings. So you can now go and try that out. Miscellaneous. So when I'm using Azure Backup, now for the virtual machines that have the SSD V2, like the premium SSD V2 and Ultra Disk, both of those, remember, let me have separate IOPS and throughput from the capacity. And also I can change the IOPS and throughput dynamically. So while the disk is in use, I can tweak those things. Well, now I can leverage the GRS for the backup. So it's replicated to the paired region but now I can also then do a cross-region recovery, so a cross-site recovery to the paired region of that virtual machine. So in a DR situation, I can restore it into the paired region, or even if I just wanna audit and test, does my restore process work? I can go and restore it to that paired region. And that was it. I told you it was pretty quick this week. I hope that was useful. Uh, till next video, take care.